So, so, today I am really freaked about, maybe I am not ready. Can you help me? Hmm. Well, this kind of interest in leading a good life comes now and then. That is the real you. The real you wants to be a better person. But unfortunately, it doesn't stay long there. The unreal you, the lower you, comes and takes over. When that comes up, somehow the, the little you, or the lower self, or the egoistic self, seems to be more powerful, takes the upper hand, so you lose that interest. So you should analyze, when did I have that desire? I know, when I went and stayed at the ashram for a week, I just wanted to be a good yogi, I wanted to be like that always. But uh, when I went back to the city, I had that feeling for a day, and then slowly calmed down, and then I thought, city is the heaven. There is a clue. What is that? The association. It is certain environments, certain associations bring similar thoughts up to the surface. If you are in the company of gambling people, even if you don't want it, you may have start that kind of seed somewhere hidden in a corner and that will say, oh, this is the right opportunity, let me come up. He is in that company. So the feeling of trying a little will come. If you are in the company of smoking people, you say, why not I? Ah, nice rounds, goes round, round, why not I try? <laughs> so it's the company that makes so, take care of your associations, the company that you keep. If you are always a member of the yogi and co, and co means company, is it not? Yogi and company, you will have a better dividend. Yes. That is the only way. How can I develop that and retain that desire as often as possible, seek their company. You don't need to do much. The mere company is, is enough to slowly lift you up, without even your knowing. That is the greatest advantage of being in the proper company. You don't need to worry about doing. Whatever you want to become, just choose that company. If you want to become a baseball player, just keep some baseball players photographs in the house, read that news, go see the baseball games, move with them, get make friends with them, automatically one day you will be a big baseball player. Yes, without even your knowing. Same way. That's why it's called satsanga, the good company. Satsangatve nishangatvam. Nishangatve nirmogatva. Nirmogatve nishchalatatva. Nishchalatatve jivan mukti. I think Chandrika knows that already. So we don't have a problem. Huh? Satsanga, the good company will free you from the bad company. The immediate result. Imagine, now you are going to be here for ten days. Certainly, you are free from many other associations. If you hadn't come here, probably you would be spending 
the ten days somewhere maybe in Miami, Las Vegas or <laughs> somewhere. So the first and the immediate result is you are free from that company. And because you are free from that company, you are free from delusion. Nishangatve nirmogatvam. Moham means delusion, wrong desires. Automatically, how many of you might have been smoking cigarettes? But now you have come in, you might have probably forgotten that. The cigarette is not going to bother you anymore. Maybe one or two days you might think of it. But third day, fourth day, that is a, a great benefit. I have seen many, many people, when they finish the 10 day retreat and go away, that's the end of their cigarette, end of their drinking, sometimes end of their wrong diets. Automatically it goes away because just 10 days makes you realize the benefit of it and you get out of that habit. You are recharged, rebuilt. It's a place of rejuvenation. He may not guarantee you to get a golden key for you to go to the heaven, but you can go with a little better health free from all your undesirable pet vices, as long as you don't go back and take them again. Even that you might have gained some strength by the time you go. It has happened in many hundreds of cases. So keep the company, then there is no moham, delusion, nirmohatve, when you are not deluded, you have clear thinking, you have equanimity, your mind is still steady. And that's all we want. Nishchala tatve jivan mukti. That's all to make you a saint, a liberated person in this life. Jivan mukti means a living liberated person. Liberation need not come when you die. You should live a liberated life. That is a real freedom. Don't be just deluded by saying, Oh, we are in a free country. All right, you are in a free country, geographically. But your real country is this. Navatvarapuri, call it. The nine-hold city. It's a holy city, anyway. Lot of holes. Huh? Nine hold city. This is your country. Are you living freely from this country? Are all your servants, your subordinates obeying you? The senses, your mind, your body. Then you are really free person. You are the master. You are liberated. It is that freedom that is worth obtaining. You can be anywhere, even in a dictatorial country, under the rulership of a dictator, still you can be free. You are free within. Nobody could destroy you. That great, powerful Roman Empire, couldn't destroy Jesus Christ. They thought that their power can completely destroy him and trace, they take away every trace of him. What happened now? He has become the unruled, uh, uncrowned king for the globe. He's the king of the kings now. That's what. So it's not the physical freedom or the political freedom is real freedom. Freedom from your own mind and senses and body. That is worth achieving. 
So when you have a little desire coming up, develop it. Something like in your garden, if you see a nice flower, somewhere long forgotten a seed, all of a sudden it grows. You see a precious. We see that very many plants like that in the ashram. Long before that lady spent so much money probably to plant beautiful plants all over, all forgotten, all got under and it's wild weeds all over. But when you happen to walk around and you see a precious plant, oh, it's so precious, valuable. What do you do immediately? You feed out all that, you give, dig a little, put a little manure, hmm? develop that, pull out all the weeds, it becomes a beautiful thing. The same way in your own field, there are a lot of beautiful seeds planted long before. They are ready to germinate. Even if you don't go and dig and look for it, if at any time it just pops up a little and you recognize, ah, it's a precious desire, immediately take the weeds all around, develop it. Otherwise, you are missing a great opportunity. So miss not such opportunities. That's worth doing. All other things can wait. You must get this first. Then everything else is going to help you. Otherwise, even if you win the whole world without that self, without that spirit or Atman, what is the use? It's just nothing. You have sold your spirit, sold your soul to get the flesh. It's not good. It's not worth. We should get that first. I have allowed myself years of emotional excess which I still cannot control. Just when I think I am on the way, something or someone throws me. What hope is there for conquering this at age 37? Hmm. You don't want me to read this way, 73. Hmm. <laughs> 37 is still you are a child. <laughs> I would like to call you my child. <laughs> that is another thing. The minute you grow a little, say 20, 25, 30, oh, you are... <laughs> What a fast growing, eh? grow slowly. Eh? You have not even reached 50. It's at 50, you are almost finishing half of your time. You are at the prime age when you are at 50. Your allotted time is 100 years, know that. You can always tackle the problems. As I said earlier in my introductory talk, nothing can throw you off. If you just keep your relationship properly, don't compromise for anything with truth. Your own peace of mind is worth billions and trillions. That is the God in you. Don't kill that God to get something. So if anything is going to come to affect your peace, simply say a big goodbye. Whether it is a profession or a person or a, 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 a degree or a position, whatever it is. Simply say a big goodbye, thank you. I care more for my peace than you. You may go, this is the way. <laughs> Don't hesitate to say that. People want kind of false life, false prestige, false pride. No. With your peace, if anything comes, fine, addition. Let it supplement you. 
but without peace even if you are going to win the whole world nothing just kick it out if you can remember this you can tackle any situation you will have a clear thinking emotion is just a wrong relationship emotion is nice but if it is based on selfish feeling you get disturbed pure emotion is you love somebody you say universal love not based on any selfishness not i say emotion is bad it comes from the heart but it disturbs you when you limit it i only want this and not that and i want it for my sake then it disturbs you all those great saints and sages were emotional people how much they cried towards god how much they felt but it's not a selfish act so if you could change your ambition and attitude in life and relationship with people and things you can win over all these problems and of course if you can't do it all by yourself seek the help seek the company of the people the people who not that the people who have the same problems <laughs> but the people who somehow handled it 